going to get into my favorite topic, uh, uh, which is uh, what do catecholamines look like and how do they work? Uh, remember, norepinephrine and adrenaline are two of the key chemical messengers of the, of the sympathetic system. I think of uh, catechols as, uh, catecholamines as, uh, as catechols. They have a chemical structure. And the chemical structure has two adjacent hydroxyl groups on a, uh, on a benzene ring. And so it, uh, the two hydroxyl groups kind of look like the, uh, the pointy ears on the, uh, on the head of a cat. So catechols look like cats. Now a catecholamine, like uh, norepinephrine, for instance, or dopamine, uh, is a catechol, uh, but it's got this hydrocarbon tail, and it ends in this uh, amine group or an ammonia group, so a uh, which has kind of an ammonia smell. So I think of a catecholamine as the entire cat, from head to tail, in its litter box. That's a catecholamine. And here's how uh, a catecholamine synthesis uh, happens. There are only three catecholamines in the body. Uh, dopamine, which is an important chemical messenger in the brain. Uh, norepinephrine and adrenaline, or epinephrine. You can see the only difference between dopamine and norepinephrine is this beta hydroxyl group. Remember, you need DBH, a dopamine beta hydroxylase, in order to make norepinephrine. And this is how this is where the that uh, hydroxyl group is, and then uh, uh, adrenaline just means that you add a methyl group uh, to this uh, N, the the amine group. Uh, so uh, the enzyme that would convert norepinephrine to epinephrine is phenylethanolamine, N methyltransferase. Right there, translating transferring a methyl group. Here's uh, how these three catecholamines work in the body. They work differently. Uh, in general, the brain has uh, three ways to control what's going on inside. One, which we've talked about a lot, is uh, neurotransmitters. A neurotransmitter is released from a nerve terminal, and it acts directly on a target cell in that organ. Uh, adrenaline is a hormone, so adrenaline gets released into the bloodstream and then is swept to a whole variety of uh, organs. Dopamine is a different type, it works outside the brain in a different way. It's called an autocrine paracrine substance. It's uh, made in, released from, and acts locally on the same or nearby cells. It's called autocrine paracrine substance. So the three catecholamines, at least outside the brain, uh, the three catecholamines have three different uh, mechanisms of uh, action. Neurotransmitter, hormone, autocrine, paracrine substance. This is important because L-DOPS, which gets turned into norepinephrine uh, uh, in, all, uh, in all organs that possess a particular uh, enzyme, L-DOPS raises the blood pressure, but it and, and it raises the plasma norepinephrine level, but norepinephrine is a terrible hormone. And so uh, the mechanism of increase in blood pressure with uh, droxydopa, or nor it's called northero, uh, is not from uh, the hormonal action of norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter, and uh, it's, a, it's actually a research topic. How, how does the blood pressure increase with uh, droxydopa? It's not from the increase in norepinephrine levels in the plasma because it's such a crappy hormone compared to adrenaline. Remember, the, the catecholamines work by way of receptors that are on the target, uh, the target cells. Uh, beta adrenoceptors are especially important. Uh, adrenaline uh, stimulates an enzyme called uh, adenylcyclase, 
which is uh, which results in um, activation of cells in the heart. The same uh, the same uh, hormone, by way of beta receptors, relaxes skeletal smooth muscle. So, uh, and why that is, frankly, I've never really figured out. But classically, uh, adrenaline stimulates the heart, increases heart rate and so forth by way of occupation of beta receptors, there are three types. Alpha receptors are especially important in, uh, in, in the blood vessel walls. So uh, adrenaline also tightens blood vessels by, uh, and so does norepinephrine by way of uh, alpha receptors. Uh, and there are three types of, uh, there are two subtypes of alpha receptors and subtypes of each, each one. I can tell you that people have spent their entire careers working on this, uh, these uh, the distinctions and identifying these receptors. In fact, uh, Bob Lifkowitz, uh, who, uh, 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 who uh, discovered the, uh, uh, the down regulation of uh, beta receptors uh, by, uh, uh, by like uh, isoproteranol or drugs that you use for asthma, you know, if you overuse them, you get tolerant to them. For discovering the mechanism of that, he shared a Nobel Prize in uh, 2012. Acetylcholine is very different uh, chemical. Here's a quiz for you. Is acetylcholine a catechol? No, it's not a catechol. Where are the two pointy ears? Is it an amine? Well, sort of. You got this uh, nitrogen there, but you notice that it's got four parts. It's attached four ways. That makes it a, it's something called a quaternary uh, amine. Um, not sure it works the same way as a catecholamine from that point of view. But it is, it is correct that all of, the, all of the messengers of the autonomic nervous system do involve uh, a nitrogen compound. Acetylcholine is uh, uh, broken down by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase, uh, which doesn't exist, I don't think, inside the neurons, but it exists in the extracellular fluid. So the main way that acetylcholine is broken down is by an enzyme. As you'll see, the main way that catecholamines are broken down is not necessarily by an enzyme. This is uh, the uh, plant that is the source of atropine uh, a, uh, a muscarinic cholinergic blocker. Uh, uh, I think it's called Atropa belladonna, I think. Belladonna from the Latin uh, for uh, good-looking woman. And I think what uh, the tradition is, is that... Uh, uh, People who are women who have uh, dilated pupils are supposed to be more attractive, something like that. Uh, there, there, there's something about the dilation of the pupils that is uh, is associated with um, sort of a pleasant attractiveness, something like that. I think that's why poker players, professional poker players, wear sunglasses. They don't want to show that their pupils are dilating when they look at their cards uh, and they're good cards. Okay, so that's uh, atropine and it classically causes madriasis, that just means dilated pupils. 